Hi, this is Irv Shapiro from Make With Tech. A couple weeks ago, Wendy from Pergear, P-E-R-G-E-A-R, an Amazon distributor, reached out to me about doing a review of the Ender 7. The Ender 7 from Creality is positioned as a very, very fast Core XY printer. One of the fastest printers in the Creality consumer line. And you can see it uh, just off in the corner behind me. As part of any review, I, I do a lot of prints. I do prints off the SD card. This is an interesting print because the infill is very, very dense. I'm not sure why they did that. But I also print a range of vases. And I do that because a vase print, printed in vase mode or spiralizer mode, is a very good test of printer performance. And the reason is that in spiralized mode, you create a single thread, a single line of filament, one perimeter thick, all the way up the model. Now, about two months ago, I did a video about alternatives to spiral mode or to vase mode. And I talked about using just external walls and no top and no fill and various ways to do that. That video uh, received some comments that were rather critical. And those comments were about the fact that I didn't fully explain spiral mode and what's unique about it. So in this video, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to clarify what spiral or vase mode is to make sure that I am accurate in my description. And then I'm gonna go through and show you four different techniques. Actually, this is the fourth technique, this vase, for producing vase-like objects out of solid models. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of those four different techniques. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, if you want to learn more about that Ender 7 behind me, on December 10th, I'll be releasing a full review of that printer. And that printer was provided to me at no cost by Pear Gear in exchange for doing the review. Now, let's talk about vase mode. Well, vase mode is a specific feature of most modern slicers, the programs obviously that we use for taking a three-dimensional object and turning it into something we can 3D print, that takes a solid object and hollows it out and prints it without a top layer. Effectively, what it does is it just prints a perimeter, the outside, and the bottom. Now it does that by printing the bottom layers and then producing a single wall perimeter all the way around. And as it's printing that perimeter, and this is something I wasn't clear about in my prior video, it slowly increments the Z axis continually. Now, that phenomena interacted with the Ender 7 test I was doing. And the reason is there's a bug in some of the newer Creality printers. I believe the CR6 has the same phenomena. And the bug is caused by a feature. And the feature in these Creality printers is that they have power fail recovery. And the way they do power fail recovery is they actually save a checkpoint file. They save the current status of the print to the SD card. And they save it to the SD card on every significant Z access movement. So when you go from layer one to layer two, they save it, layer two to layer three, they save it. Well, in vase mode, there are really no discrete layers. And yes, in preview, you can look at them and it seems like there's a discrete layer, but it's actually doing micro increments of the Z axis as it goes around. And so 
that causes the firmware on these printers to try to write to the SD card continually. The result is a 3D print that looks like this. Now, if you wanted to create this weave on purpose, it might be very interesting, but this took a couple hours to print because it would print a little bit stop, little bit stop, little bit stop, little bit stop, little bit stop. And clearly this is a failed print. So there is a workaround for this. There is a correction for this. And I printed um, all of these vases on that Ender 7 behind me. So you're going to have to subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to make sure you see that video on December 10th. And then I'll explain the solution to that problem. But today I want to talk about four different ways that you can produce a vase mode print and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Let's first look at a traditional vase mode print. A traditional vase mode print has the disadvantage that it's very thin because it's a single perimeter. And how do you do this? Well, let's go into the Creality Slicer, which is really a rebranded version with some cosmetic changes of the Cura Slicer and take a look. And I'm using the Creality Slicer because that's what I was using for my test. So here on the screen, we'll see a solid object. You'll see this is a solid cylinder. It was produced in about a minute on Tinkercad. And you'll see there's a little bit of vertical banding if we zoom in. And that's something you can adjust for by telling Tinkercad to make the circles rounder. But it's fine for this example. Now to ensure I'm starting with a clean slate, I'm gonna use a little trick. I'm gonna go up here to quality and I'm gonna to switch to a different quality. Doesn't make a difference which one. Switch to a different profile. And there you'll see all the things I've previously changed and I'm gonna discard those changes. Then I'm gonna go up here to the hamburger menu and I'm gonna make sure I'm on advanced at least or all settings so that you can see more detail about what the slicer is going to do. And I'm going to go down to special modes, down right over here, and I'm going to click on spiralize outer contour. That's what vase mode is called in a Cura slicer. Let me close this window, slice this model. Let's look at a preview together. Let me rotate this down a bit so you can see it more clearly. And you'll see that we now we have a vase. And if we look at a single layer, we'll see it's printing one perimeter at a time. Now, because in the preview it looks like it's printing on a single layer, it's not obvious that it's micro incrementing. But I can tell you from the bug that I ran into that it is definitely micro incrementing. So that's a very easy way to create a, a vase from a solid object, but these are often not watertight. They're beautiful. Um, here's another one, quite beautiful. This was actually printed on an Ender 5. It's a model from the Prusa website, interestingly enough. And what I'll often do with these, I'll, I'll take a glass, a regular drinking glass, I'll put it inside, I'll put water in that, I'll put the roses in that, and then display it on the table because these are beautiful, but they're fragile and they don't hold water. So how can we do a better job? Well, one way that's a bit of work is we can print with a bigger nozzle. This vase was printed on an MP10. That's a mono price 3D printer. It's 300, it's quite a large printer. It goes 300 millimeters high. And um, while it's not a great printer, what I've done is I've made it my large nozzle printer. So I've put installed a one millimeter nozzle in there. And when I print vases on that printer, they're quite strong and they're watertight. And um, they print fast because I can increase the layer height to generally 0.4 or 0.5. That's as opposed to 0.2 or 0.24. So they print faster and they're quite a bit stronger. Not everyone has a dedicated printer and changing the nozzle all the time on most printers is quite painful. So there's another technique you can use. And that technique 
is to over extrude. And while this model, and you can see it's a little squishy here, uh, was printed in vase mode with regular extrusion, this one, which is a little stronger um, and is more likely to be watertight, but not for sure, um, because it's still a single perimeter was printed over extruded. Let me go back to the screen and show you how you do that. So if you go over here, the easiest way to find this is you can type in line width and you'll see that line width is a quality setting. And the default line width on this printer is 0.44 millimeters. So I'm going to change that to 0.6 millimeters. Now you might be saying, if the nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, how can it print 0.6? Well, what you're doing is you're forcing the slicer to push extra filament to over extrude. Now it won't be absolutely precise when you're over extruding because the nozzle is still 0.4 millimeters. Whereas in this case, I was using a larger nozzle. In this case, I over extruded, but I'll tell you, the print is quite beautiful. Whoops, wrong one. This print is still quite beautiful with no visible defects. And that's one of the advantages of 3D printing in vase mode. Because of this micro changes to the Z axis, there's no visible seam because there's no real stop and start. Whereas I'll show you another technique in a minute that produces beautiful vases quite quickly and the strongest and most watertight but there's potentially a visible seam. On this one, you can see it here. Perhaps I'll show this to you in a close up. And that might be something that's not suitable for your print. So let's do, go ahead and slice this model. You'll see we still have a vase and we still have a single perimeter here if we rotate around on this model. Now, let's look at an alternative that does not use vase mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the slicer to print three perimeters. That's going to make it very strong. This was printed on the Ender 7. This was printed on the Ender 7. These are quite strong and they're watertight. I'm going to tell it to print three perimeters, no infill and no top. And effectively, I'm going to take a solid object and hollow it out. Now, in this particular case, because of the nature of this print, you cannot see the seam. And the reason is that Cura or other slicers, in this case, the Creality Slicer, will attempt to put the seam, the changes, on spots in the model that are sharp corners. And there are lots of sharp corners on this model. So let's take a look at how we set that up. Well, to make sure we don't have any other settings set, I'm going to discard the changes and switch back and forth to our standard quality. So we'll see line width went back to 0.4. Uh, we can actually just verify by looking down here that spiralize is off. And now we're going to change a couple settings. Let's first go to the shell. The setting of wall thickness is going to determine how many perimeters. And what basically it does is it takes the nozzle size or the extrusion size and it divides it into the wall thickness and get that gives you a wall count or the number of perimeters. So you'll see here, we're going to have three perimeters, nice and strong. You'll also see here that right now, top and bottom are set to 0.8. Well, I can't change it here because that would change them both, but I can change this right here. So I have no top thickness. Let's say don't print anything on the top. Now I'm going to go down to infill and I'm going to change this to zero. So no infill, no top, and I've set the wall thickness to give me an appropriate print. Let's close this. Let's slice this now. 
Uh, let's close this warning over here and you'll see once again, we have a vase, but this time, if we take a look at that vase, let's shift this over a little and we look at it closely, we'll see that there are actually multiple walls being printed for each layer. But you'll also see in this case, because there are no sharp corners, it's going to line up the layer change in the same place. Now there is an option to put the seam in a random place, but I found that's really not very good. It just ends up with defects all over the model. With an actual seam, if you were going to paint this, you could do a little bit of sanding and end up with a perfect model. So to recap, we looked at four techniques. The first technique is a traditional vase. This one and this one. Beautiful models print fast, but very thin. The second technique was to over extrude. A little better, maybe not watertight. The third technique, which is a lot of work, is to put a different nozzle in your printer. The technique I actually like and the print times are maybe 10% longer than real vase mode is to print multiple perimeters, no infill, no top layer. And in particular, if you pick models that have some detail in them, you're unlikely to see the seam. And I think this is the ideal solution. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. If you did, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, share this video with everyone you want. Um, please feel free to add comments as you see. I listen to the comments, I read them, I think about them, and I clarified the effect of spiralizing your model. And you can always go to forum.makewithtech.com for detailed discussions and to post all of your pictures of your prints. So thanks for watching, and let's continue to learn things together.